Okay, so you are going to see tonight uh, the the admirable version, right? <laughs> Is it the admirable version? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. right. Uh, uh, of Superman 2, which uh, has a complex history because, uh, as uh, some of you might know, or not know, but there's been a lot of stuff on the internet and, and the press, uh, the director of the first movie, Richard Donner, was going to make uh, two movies at the same time. Which we planned since the beginning, which was Superman 1 and 2. And uh, the idea was that uh, we would end the first film on a cliffhanger, like in the old days of serials, actually, uh, where to be continued. And uh, we started with that plan, but things started becoming more and more complex. <clears throat> it became like the Phantom Zone. <laughs> and, uh, we started on over budget and we started uh, not making the man fly and still not making the man fly and still not making the man fly. And uh, we missed the opening, which was supposed to be summer of uh, 78 uh, because uh, we were way, way behind on the two film. So at that point, uh, so, so you understand, we would shoot like in the morning at the Daily Planet, we would shoot scenes of the first film in the afternoon, we would shoot scenes of the second film. And then uh, the editor would work at the same time as both of And what happened is that, um, uh, budget higher and higher and higher to the extent that everybody agreed that the only way to uh, come out of Christmas was to stop shooting uh, the second picture, which was about 30%, 35% not shot, uh, and to put everything into the first picture to finish it and be out of Christmas with one film. Uh, with the idea of coming back and finishing later uh, with the same director, uh, Richard Donner, the, the second film. And the other big difference was that we took the end of the second film, which was the death of uh, Louis Lane, uh, and Superman turning the world around to make her live again, so that uh, we had a, you know, like the best possible end for the first film, because if the first film didn't work, there would be no second film, you know, logically. Finish or not finish, or something would have been kaput. So, uh, at that point, we, uh, stopped shooting the second film, finished all the scenes with Hackman, who was uh, uh, hired for two films, as was Brand. And uh, we uh, got in time to come out at Christmas. Now, of course, at that, at that uh, I mean, those last months were very, very difficult and very tense because uh, we were enormously over budget. Uh, everybody was going crazy with film that that summer. So we uh, uh, were all, of course, completely hysterical, you know, until the film opened to see what was going to happen. And it did open, it was an enormous success. Uh, I thought I would be here, I'd be somewhere Bolivia, catching a boat, swimming with a crocodile. Anyway, the fact is, the first film was an enormous hit. And uh, 
And then, uh, different things started uh, uh, in the press. Uh, one of them was that uh, Richard Donner, all of you were all friendly and happy at the premiere, and all that, everything was over, fantastic. Started calling us, uh, us producers, names to I won't repeat here, but they were not very elegant. Um, and rather be rude. And he also said that um, he would come back to finish the second film uh, his way or no way. And on top of that, he said that he wouldn't do it if uh, my, my best friend, uh, my, my childhood best friend, years, or 35 years, uh, had co-produced with me and, uh, and they didn't get along at all. And he said, if he's on the film, uh, I'm not on the film. So, he was not on the film. Gone. <laughs> but my best friend was on the film. And uh, then Richard Lester, uh, that, that we had worked with, we had worked with him before, and he had come again to help um, to finish the first film. Actually, he had the idea to drop the 35% in the second half. And uh, he then uh, took over the, I mean, he decided that he would do the second film. And uh, I, I, I'm saying all this because it's interesting because um, some of you might know that uh, obviously Donna was uh, very unhappy and, um, and we had to rewrite a lot of the second picture to make it work because don't forget we had taken that end we needed a new end, and we needed a new beginning, and then we had another problem, which was branding, because he had, as I said, uh, the question, 11.3 uh, quarter percent of the gross, which means that on the second film, he could have made another, he made 18 million dollars on the first film, uh, and he could have made another uh, 16 or 17 on the second film. Way, the way it worked because it did almost as much. So, of course, big decision because we were still uh, over budget and debt. We had not recouped the money, etc. And so the thing was we keep the uh, brand uh, and pay him his 11 points to the three quarter or do we get rid of it? And then I, I came up with, with the idea that the, the, the story of, uh, of really of the father and the son um, was really over in the first film, the way we, we had it now, because we had the end, where he basically uh, says at the end of the first film, he says, sorry, Whatever you told me, I'm going to make her live, and I'm going to disobey her. That's it. When you became an adult, I said, you know, because I mean, Joel Brand always said, you know, you have to do this and this, and, uh, uh, uh. and he said, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I love this woman, and I'm just going to turn the world around and make her live. So in a way, the, the story, uh, dramatically, the story with, with, with the father and the son was over. And that's it. He said, hey, sorry, I don't agree with you. I got my own life. Uh, and, and that was my reasoning uh, creatively, besides, of course, 11.3, which <laughs> were a big point. <laughs> uh, point three. <laughs>